Welcome to this episode on rail guns. We're going to be watching a mortal and frigate go in and actually use the rail guns. Let's just slow time down a little bit and watch what does go on as it attacks this Harkonish mining station. So we've got three uh, medium rail guns on this particular ship. They're all on the front of the ship. So at the all across the front through here, we've got like lots of rail guns. We'll see it fire very, very soon. This thing also has weaponry, which is now firing back towards us. We do actually have a point defense. If I go and click on this one, the missiles that it's bring, or the, the, the I think it's missiles that it's got, uh, and just about to hit our point defense range, but it's the rail guns that do the point defense in this instance, which is not ideal. So anyway, we don't have any other point defense on this particular ship. Let's have a look and see what happens with, particularly with this as we go in. So we've got three, 384 in through there as the shielding, plus then 50 for the armor, and then 100% for the hull on the actual mining station. Here they come, the missiles are coming in. We're trying to sort of shoot them, we just can't do it. But eventually we're gonna stop worrying about that, and we're then just gonna go after. So we're trying to fire at the enemy. Now we're still taking a bit of damage here, unfortunately. They've got all sorts of things coming in. So this may not be a good idea because we didn't have any point defense whatsoever. The missiles are smashing into us. Once we can get close enough to use our rail guns though on, the, on this, we'll then start to see this thing go, go right down. In we come. In we come. Now at that point defense range for it. There we go. These are the rail guns now firing. Now see how there's two volleys per shot. We've got medium rail guns, which is what we're seeing through there. They'll then hit. Some of them will hit. In they go again. We've got good rates of fire. And in they go. See how it's what it's what the rail gun is doing is it's actually hitting the shield, not doing much damage to the shield. And then there's a certain amount that then bypasses the shield and is then hitting the next layer underneath, which is the armor. So it's actually doing damage to the armor. There's also a chance that it will then get past the armor and do some more damage down into the actual hull itself, which means doing damage to the actual components. Let's have a look and see what actually happens through here. So as it's going in, it's, it's losing more and more, less shielding, but we actually are smashing away at the armor. We're in really close now, so we're in really close doing this particular sort of sort of uh, damage to uh, to what we're seeing through the side. There it goes. We've almost got the armor down, but the shielding is still up. This is what rail guns do; they bypass armor, and uh, and so in this instance, as it comes back down, uh, we should start to now see the damage done on the internals. Look at the internals going down now as well. Sorry, I'll just get that one so we can see it again. Look at all the damage that's been happening on the inside. The shields are still up, but we have um, we're now starting to do like damage to the general slots, uh, weapons. There's two, still two weapons that are that are still operational, but everything else is now coming back down. We're ripping through the ship, uh, but the but the armor is sorry. The shielding is just only slightly below the uh, below the fifty percent. So it's actually still got a a little way to go with the shielding. But eventually what's going to happen is we're going to take out the shield generators and then it's going to drop dramatically. So the rail guns are fantastic at bypassing shields. That's what they do. But there are some caveats. You don't want to, you want to have rail guns that can do a lot of damage. So you want to have at least mediums where you've got getting like a lot of rail, rail damage going in. Or if you can get a large, um, like a, a heavy rail gun, they're really, really awesome. Uh, they're the sort of next tech level up from tech level one, so they'd be tech level two. Tech level zero is the pre-war uh, techs that you then go, go and get. We're now, we've now got everything sort of down. Uh, we do actually have one damage defense back in through there. Most of the stuff is damaged on the ship, and it will then just continue down until the actual station is blown up. And so it sort of got in really, really close with the station, peppering away, destroying what has to be done. Uh, just with rail guns, so um, so that's what rail guns do as a as a point of difference. If you watch the episode on beams, you'll see that the beams actually went from the outside in, destroyed the shields, destroyed the armor, then destroyed the hull. In this instance, it it, it bypasses a portion of the uh, of the shielding and then goes in and then deals with the next layer in, and so that's actually what that one then goes and does. And so now it's just ripping the, sh the hull apart, and uh, very very soon this thing is going to be completely destroyed. Now we're playing it on very very slow mo in through here, just to sort of see the differences of what does go on. You can get a um, a percentage chance at different times to actually bypass the armor and then do damage to components directly. And so there is actually a often a bit of a chance that you're going to sort of 
destroy something or, or damage something inside the ship, which can be critical. <laughs> Particularly if it's something like a shield generator or a weapon or uh, or a reactor or something like that, it's going to sort of then cause a lot of a lot of dramas on the actual ship itself. So anyway, that's rail guns. Uh, they are really really awesome. Uh, particularly against against factions that do use uh, shields. I'm going to show you something, actually. Um, if you might do it, should I do it now? Yeah, I'll do it now. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and place another scenario in here, and we're going to have a look at that as well. And it's this is to use the Xenox. The Xenox have got extremely strong shielding, which makes it very, very hard to break through with conventional weapons. But a railgun with a bypass is the best weapon to use against the Xenox. All right, so off in the distance here, we've actually got a Xenox mining station. Our uh, cr our frigate the uh, with the rail guns in the front is now sort of moving in to do the attack range. Now, why are the Xenox a different category to most other factions with their shielding? Let's have a look at the actual station itself. At tech level two, now remember it goes zero, one, two, it's not one, two, three. So at tech level two, the third one in, <laughs> there is, they have access to these Megatron Z4 shields. And what these actually have is they've got a recharge rate of 2.2 per second, which is quite dramatic. And so they can actually absorb an awful a lot of, um, of firepower coming against them. And so it's like they're very, very difficult to actually dislodge uh, the actual, like the Xenox, unless you have a way to bypass the shields. Hence the use of rail guns, because still there's a percentage that gets past all of the shields, no matter how good the shields are. But their shields are incredible. Now we saw there before we actually had reduced the um, uh, reduced the shields down a fair bit before. Like you know we've had maybe it was not even halfway down I think in the previous example before we completely destroyed all the armor. Let's see what happens here. Now we are actually a tech level higher than what we were last time uh, but we'll have a look and see what actually does go on here with the Megatrons now this has got a few different things that also go in they've got um, uh, the shield penetration chance is lower there is actually a chance for every shot that it will actually bypass the shields entirely and do damage uh, on the on the next layer down uh, and then the, the ratio of the damage is also lower so it, these are very very good shields I'll show you in comparison to the shields on our ship in this case, we're using Covidian shields, which are also at tech level two. So same tech level as the Xenox special shields. These have got like a, a recharge rate of only 0.8 per second. So essentially one third the recharge rate of the Xenox shield. So they, they really do struggle to sort of uh, replenish themselves. Uh, plus they also have a higher chance for penetration to go through and another 10% more damage going through when the penetration does occur. So they're the differences really between the uh, the shields. I mean, uh, as a, and also the the Xenox sh uh, shields also have a higher shield strength natively as well, which I think is superficially what people look at. But we'll have a look at shielding in another episode. But in this instance, I wanted to show this is where the rail guns absolutely excel. So if you're fighting Xenox, use rail guns. Now we'll watch the damage done to the station. So we'll just watch what happens with the shields and then the armor and also further down. When we get close enough to use these rail guns, they'll fire very, very soon. It must be very close now to the range. I think that's a rail gun line there. So we should be firing about now. Here it goes. So they go in. And see, we're doing a little bit of damage to the shielding, but see how the shielding is coming back up. But we're now smashing through onto the shield itself. And now we just sort of park it on the outside of where we actually are. But just look at this. The shields will sort of stay up to a large degree. But we do cut through them. And this is important. Actually, they are dropping. They're dropping pretty well in this instance. But, um, but it's uh, against the Xenox. They, their shields are incredible. So we are getting through. They're also doing damage back to us. But the rail guns, really good against the Xenox, just because of this bypass that we actually sort of see through here. Other other ships have to then sort of have to use, and we've got a lot of rail guns on this ship. So there's a few that are missing, but a lot are getting through. We are sort of bringing this thing down. Anyway, I thought I'd just show that because um, not that it really. I thought we'd see the the shields actually further up by the time the uh, by, by the time the armor sort of dissipated. But we are doing a lot of damage deeper into the ship, and then eventually we're going to sort of then do damage on the defenses and bring everything down. In fact, they both come down at about the same time. But 
very, very good against the Xenox. So uh, that's the big weakness of the Xenox is, is rail guns, and then we're sort of into the actual into the ship itself. I don't know if we took any much damage, hardly anything at all uh, with what they were doing. That, theirs was just beam weaponry and they're just really all they're doing is trying to smash out our shielding, which is not really impacting us one way or another. So anyway, let's get into and actually have a look at rail guns. Okay, so now in this case, I've actually got, um, like we've now tech level zero, tech level one, tech level two. So I've now got tech level two exposed in this particular scenario. And I think we'll actually look at the tech level twos in this particular instance and sort of see how they compare. And so the rail guns are at the bottom of the weapons area, just above the troops area of the of the tech tree. And they're under the kinetic weapons. So kinetic weapons sort of start off with uh, long range cannons. They then move across into rail guns in through here. So you've got rail gun a medium rail guns up this through this side. You've got basic point defence with a point defence cannon, which in comparison to the um, uh, to the uh, Sentinel beam, which we sort of saw in the last episode, is really not good. But we'll do I'll do a separate video on point defence. Uh, so there is actually a point defence rung that you can actually make use of. But really, we're interested in this rail gun area through here, the small and the mediums back and through this side. Uh, we'll have a look at this in game, but this is actually this is um, this is fairly important with what it does do. Uh, then we go into the um, into the version two and of the small and mediums as well, and then we also then have another branch that comes off in um, in tech level two for the heavy rail guns, and this is these are really really good because they pack an awful lot of damage for every single shot. You can see they're 52 per shot, and that's important. Um, even though it's sort of showing that it does 6.24 per second, the fact that it does so much damage per shot means that there's not much that can stop it. And um, if we have a look at these in through here, for example, the actual damage rate, these do 13 damage, but they do 8.51 per second. So you'd think, okay, well, that's the, it's better to have one of these because they do more damage per second than the large one. But it's actually not the case. The damage per second there at 6.24 at short range 2.67 as opposed to uh, 8.51 and 3.484. Uh, the difference is is that the amount of damage per shot is uh, can be mitigated, and so even though if there was no mitigation, that would be the damage per second. But with the mitigation, that can drop a lot. And as the tech levels go up, and as the armor tech levels go up, that mitigation gets higher and higher and higher, and it's harder to do damage. And so that's why. That number that we see there, the actual, I like to use those um, damage per second ratios to get a bit of a feel within the actual weapon itself as to what it's like at long range and, and short range. But uh, for the rail, for these heavy rail guns at 52 damage, there's not a lot they can mitigate in terms of their armor being able to, um, uh, what's it called, Re be reactive. Like the reactive armor component uh, for, from ships is not going to be able to kick in as much, anywhere near as much with this one. And so uh, the, a lot of that damage will then bleed through into the into the ship. So anyway, I'll just mention that now. Let's go in and have another look at the uh, at the actual design of the ships, and we'll um, and we'll talk about the, the, we'll compare them with uh, different other weaponry and sort of see how they do compare. Okay, so let's actually talk about this. We've got the, the I'm using the S2. I'm going to be looking at these at the small rail gun in through here. Now it's a close-in weapon, just like we saw with the beams. It means it's a short-range weapon. Uh, the size is 13, so it's smaller than a Thuon beam at 14. Like the, I'm just looking at the small weapon at this point in time. The crew requirement is still five. The static energy use is one, so that's the um, the static energy is, is what we actually have in through there. That's the energy use uh, just in when the ship's doing nothing. Uh, it's a direct fire, similar to the beam weapons. We have to have the field of fire on the various turrets has to be like this is a 270, so we've got a bit bit more field of fire through there. These are 180s, and so if they're on those, we've only we've, we can only really fire from the at the front of the ship. So that's important to know. Uh, so they're direct fire. Uh, standard impact, basically they're a kinetic weapon, they're solid, they sort of fire a slug at fairly slow speed at 350 per second. Uh, back in through there, we've got a range of 970, which is fairly small. It's probably the smallest of these sort of weapons. Again, if we compare it to like the Maxos Blaster, the uh, small Maxos Blaster, which is down through here, we can then sort of see, as just as a point of comparison, that by the time you get to tech level two, the Maxos Blaster is a little bit more. Like it's uh, it's 120 uh, clicks further with its range than than the uh, than the railgun actually is. So the railgun has got that. It's inaccurate. Um, so it actually does 72% uh, 
um, you know, chance of actually hitting at uh, point blank accuracy, and at maximum range, it's only 36%, so it's half. So it's very inaccurate at long range. And that's reflected a little bit by the damage in there as well. There is actually a damage trail off, I think, yeah, 10% per thousand, which means that 10% of the damage going in, so 13 damage as opposed to, uh, then, then we've got 11.74 uh, back in through there as well. So every shot that goes in with one of these standard rail guns at tech level 2 is going to do 13 damage. It's going to be a little bit less at tech level 1. So it's going to be it's going to be a smaller again. Every tech level will just go up it slightly. Uh, and so it, it really is a point-blank weapon. You want to go in as close as possible. So you want to be doing that against, if you're going to put rail guns in, you want everything set to aggressive, and then the next one also against against uh, against stronger targets also at aggressive, to maximise the damage. Because if you're only getting half the half the shots going in as what you did when you're at point blank, really, what's the point? You might as well just go all in, try to do what damage you can. And so this is how you then use, use rail guns. You need to be in close, in close and personal, basically, because the um, the the trail off. You can see there the damage between. The, the the damage per second at 4.25 on the third line up the top and then the damage at maximum range at nearly at 2 it's less than half when you ca when you calculate the um the accuracy and then the also the um, the trail off as well it's really not great so in that sense it's a bit of a problem uh if you are at max range so if you are going to be using rail guns like as a predominant weapon on a craft make sure that you have it set to be aggressive no matter how strong the target is otherwise it's just it's, it's, it can be very very ineffective uh so then we've got the weapon countermeasures so it actually does a bypass it's hard it's hard for it to be shot down by point defense weaponry so they have a hard time actually hitting these so it's got a, it's not as good as uh as some of the other weaponry like it's not as good as the beam weaponry at, at sort of intercepting those but it's um but it, it's got a plus 64 chance of actually using countermeasures against a point defense but it, it really doesn't target other things very well it can be used as point defense but it's very very poor at, at point defense uh, so damage fall off ratio we did that one before the, de the speed is slow at 350 per second this is where it gets interesting the shield bypass and the armor bypass now it takes a bit to explain this one here so the shield bypass means that let's just say well it's doing 13 damage you can see there at point blank so 13 damage coming in actually to make it easier for ourselves let's make it 12 so we just like if we, if we sort of do it at maximum range it's about 12 so if it's going to hit like just say for every single hit at, at, at 12 40 percent of that actually that's still not going to be easier i'll just do it at 13 as, an, as a bit of an example and so 13 is going to mean that the the shot will hit 60 percent of that will damage the shield okay so or if, if, if the shield is still up so there'll be 60 percent damage to the shield and then 40 percent will then bleed through onto the next layer which should be the armor there is a chance at that point it will bleed through even more and so what that means is we have a small amount in this case it would be what's that around about say five or six would it would end up getting through to the next layer it then has to get through the reactive component which means that it has to sort of then it may it may, may have like one two or three for example would be typically so it may only be two points of damage or three points of damage on the actual armor itself but it still is is stop it is damaging what the next layer actually is and that doesn't it can get repaired but it can't actually re it can't uh, replenish itself like shields can so yes it, there is actually a damage control and they will actually try to fix it up over time as well but essentially that that shield bypass is why these are great against shields because you you can go in and start to do damage directly to the ship uh, which ultimately can break through if you've got a very very strong shield shielded ship the rail guns are going to absolutely eat it up but um, like particularly if it's got weak armor uh, because it, it like as i say 40 percent will get through the shields no matter what uh, now the next thing the armor bypass is actually a bit of a negative it says negative 20 percent through there now when it's got the shield bypass it does mean what it means it means it's bypassing the shields and 40 percent of that of that so it's, it's going to do 40 percent less damage to the shields but 40 percent will then bleed through to the next layer for armor bypass when it hits, it hits the armor layer there's then a 20% reduction. Now, when it's got a reduction, it basically means that it's weak against armor. 
to the tune of 20% of the damage coming back. So if it had, um, for example, say four points becoming, or five points, let's just say five points of damage bled through from the initial attack and hit the armor, then 20% of that would not get through. So the five would become four, and then the reactive component of the armor would then kick in and it may reduce it even a lot more. So that's how the uh, the shield bypass and, and armor bypass do work. Uh, it's a bit convoluted, but when you see it positive, it means it's splitting the numbers and some pieces are going past and other pieces are doing damage to the actual component on the outside. So with, if it's shields, it's doing 60% damage to shields, 40% is then passing through. It then hits the armor. 20% of, of that 40% is then taken off again. And so you've got less and less going through through the ship but you still get through so the bigger the number you can see there we've got like a damage of 13 is coming through so you're not much damage is going to be done at the armor if we go and have a look and compare the the small rail gun with the medium rail gun and have a bit of a look to see what's going on through there and by the way let's not worry too much about the intercept for fighters and seeking those numbers are very, very poor. Like So it's in comparison, if you have a look at the previous episode about the Sentinel point defense, you don't use these as point defense weaponry, even though it does have a capacity to do it. Uh, the intercept range as well is, is just not great. But the, uh, importantly at the bottom here, look at shots per volley. Let's have a look and compare this to the medium railgun. So that's just down through here. And so now what we're looking at is still a close-in weapon. Now notice that the damage component, the fourth line, fifth line down, is 13 for both. So the actual damage that bleeds through is not different. And the reason for that is the very the second last line, which is the shots per volley, which is basically the small has got one turret that's firing. The medium is the same on the same turret has got two uh, elements that are firing at, uh, like with the rail guns. And so what that means is that essentially it's still two 13 power pellets instead of one 13 power pellet that are then moving through. And this is why you may want to at this point uh, when you are to tech level two is to stop using the mediums to a large degree and switch across to the heavy rail guns. Now the heavy rail guns in comparison, if we have, for, hover over this one in through here, these do 52 damage. And so imagine these actually hitting. So 60% of it's going to do damage to the shield. So we're looking at, say, around about, say, 30 of the, of the points are going to actually do damage to the shield. And then another 20-odd are going to bleed through to the next layer. Of that, 20% is then is still going to disappear because we've still got the same shield bypass issue. Sorry, armor bypass issue. So of the 20 that gets through, 20% of that is, is taken off so it's down to around about sort of 15 16 i guess actually then doing damage directly onto the armor so a lot more damage uh getting through because of that actual damage component and that's why if you if you do have access to the uh, the heavy rail gun you're going to ultimately do massive damage to ships by using that as opposed to the medium just because the medium really only does 13 damage as opposed to 52 it's incredible the difference. So um, it's it, you know, that sort of thing is actually worth it, worth having a bit of a look at through there. Even though um, when you look at it, like the damage rate doesn't look that different because it does take a lot be between shots. Like the actual time between shots on a on a heavy rail gun is, if I just hover over this one through here, you've got a, a fire rate of six seconds between shots. On the small rail gun, you've got a a of a, a um, uh, a where is it the fire rate of 2.2 seconds so it, it fires faster it fires basically three shots to one for the heavy but the heavy does big big damage and that's that's really the the um, the impact there with the actual heavy I don't think we're going to see much difference there in terms of we have better range on the heavy uh, if we just go back to the heavy in through this side and just sort of see what its accuracy is it's still same accuracy for point blank as opposed to as opposed to maximum range so if you can use target tracking on this to increase your ability to make hits, that would be valuable. Uh, but you may need to balance that out between also putting countermeasures on the ship to actually allow your ships to survive long enough to get the shots in. So it may still be worthwhile running in, but every six seconds you're going to send in a massive load uh, from this particular, this particular heavy railgun. But when these hit, they really hit hard.
in comparison to the other, even though it fires at a much lower rate. It's very interesting the way the game actually does do this because it allows you to really finesse your ships once you actually sort of start to get to know what each weapon actually does do. But the heavy rail guns are awesome as long as you've got, like, if you're going to improve the targeting of them, uh, it really can make a massive difference, but you've got to then be careful of the survivability of your own ships to actually allow it to do that. So uh, a lot of things to consider uh, when you actually are looking at railguns. If we compare the small railgun with the... Um, we, did, we did it with the Maxos Blaster, I think, didn't we? Uh, Maxos, the small Maxos Blaster in through there. I think we had a look at this just before. Yeah, no, we did, actually. So we don't need to really look at this one to any great degree. The railguns don't do any actual bombardment damage to, to planets, including the, the heavy, I don't think. The heavy railgun, yeah, it doesn't... Actually, does do bombardment damage. So the heavy railgun can be used to bombard um, planets, but it really is not designed for that. It's not really what it's all about. So um, so you don't tend to use them in that sort of capacity. You mainly use the heavies, as I say, just to sort of smack through shields and do damage deeper into the actual ship itself. Anyway, I hope this has been helpful. Um, I will catch you in the next episode.